First thing that we're going to do before we uh, do our modifications on the two aluminum pucks is go ahead and swap our end change gears out back to our uh, for our imperial sizes. So I do have the machine disconnected at the disconnect on the wall, so it's not. You can see that it's disconnected there. Uh, this machine also has the safety switch down here that has to be engaged to be able for it to uh, turn on. So I thought I would show you go ahead and swapping the gears back the way we need to. All right, first thing we'll do is take our five millimeter Allen key, go ahead and loosen these two socket head bolts up. All right, and then I want to align the key so that they're both up. <clears throat> I'll get this one turned to where, all right, so that one's more up and that one's more up as well. One of them will fall out if you're not careful. Take that one off. All right, so we're gonna remove the 50 right there. And then also remove the 70 right there. All right. Now, what we're going to do is put our, let me double check. So here's our 25. And the 25 is going to be A, which this is the A position here. So we'll put the 25 back on right there. Go ahead and get our spacer and bolt back on there. All right, and then we're going to take this guy off because this, this one is just used as a spacer. And then we're going to go back with our 50. So I mean, I'm just checking the chart here. B, which is this spindle here, the lower one is going to be the 50. So 50 tooth, and we're going to have to move our, we got to move our quadrant out a little bit to get this on because you see the, the uh, gear teeth won't mess you up. So. This spindle right here positions back and forth, so I have to get in there and loosen that up. And that's actually needs to be a 26 millimeter wrench back there. It's right between inch and inch and a 16th. So I just use an adjustable wrench to get in there as close as I can on that hex because the uh, inch and a 16th flops around too much. So we're gonna loosen that one up. Okay, and then push it back a little bit so we can get our gear in there like that. Get it where there's just a little bit of, just a tiny amount of slack in between the, the gear teeth. Okay, now we can tilt our quadrant up to that one there. Okay. All right, put our spacer gear back on this one and then tighten it back up with the retainer bolt and washer. Put it in gear. Tighten those two back down. Give it a spin to make sure it sounds right. All right, there we go. Now before I close it back up, I'm gonna go ahead and apply some more of our, the uh, this stuff right here, the uh, gel lubricant. So I've got the, lathe on the power to it so i'm going to go ahead and engage the switch down here turn it on i got it in the lowest speed go ahead and just get some fresh lubricant on the gear
All right. I think this stuff works really well. I haven't used it long enough to uh, really determine how well it's going to work, but I can see that the gears are still really clean from the last time that I did wash them off and reapplied this gel lubricant. And it's very sticky and clings to the part, so it's not going to fall and drip off. All right, so we're ready to go. We'll start with the OD part first. So what I want to do is let's see how lucky we can get by chucking this thing up and not having a bunch of indicating to have to do. That's where the six jaw really shines. So I'm going to gently set it in there and just try to let the six jaw scroll chuck center itself up. All right, just like that. I'm just going to go around and very lightly tighten each pinion. So let me grab an indicator and see where we're at. We'll put it on the face first. You all see that? Yeah, I think you can see that. Okay, so it's within 1,000 on the face. I'm going to call that good enough for that. Let's check the OD, the run out. And see how it looks here. A half a thousandth run out, which is right at, right in line what I had this uh, chuck set to. So perfect. No having no having to bump it around or or adjust the chuck. It's running nice and true for for what we're doing here. Awesome. I'm going to use a high speed tool bit to uh, turn this. So I, I'm going up to a shoulder. I want to make sure the tool bit clears. So what we're going to do is just position it so that I can tell that the edge of the tool does not rub the part. Just like that. There we go. So this journal we're going to turn needs to be 20.75 millimeters. That's converted over to inches 0.8169. Go ahead and see where I'm, where we're at right now. So we're right at 866. So that's going to be a difference of uh, 49 thousandths there and about. So. Let's go ahead and get started on it. Go ahead and get a zero set on the shoulder. I can tell I'm just touching it. Get this indicator set. We'll just do light cuts to sneak up on our on our finish here. That's looking pretty nice. Do another 20 thou cut. Make sure we dial it in first before we start making our cut. All right. Our direct reading says 825. Really like the way this uh, digit mic's got the the numbers directly on the uh, the barrel there so you can see exactly where you're at so we want 817 so that's going to be five six seven eight thousand so i'm going to sneak up on it so we'll do a four thousandths cut dial in four right here and then hopefully that'll leave four but we'll mic it We'll make sure there's no dust on it where I mic it. Give it another check. And we are at 821. So, one, two, three, four. Tried to go about a half a thou under that.
One thou clean up on the face. All right. And let's see if we finished it where we want it there. All right. We wanted 817 and I'm one tenth over 817. So we're actually uh, two tenths. 0.8169 is your actual uh, on size dimension. We're two tenths over that, so I'd call that good. I'm not sure if that's a pilot or for bearing is going to go on there, but uh, hopefully, if that's a bearing, that actually would make a, a really nice fit. All right. We still got a chamfer on there, although you may not be able to see it, so we're going to leave that alone and uh, leave it right where it's at right now. So moving on to our next puck right here, this one poses a, a really interesting problem, and that is getting in there to measure it. Now, I've, I've got the tools to do it, but what I wanted to show was this would be ideal for a tri mic, which this is uh, one of my tri mics right here. And uh, this one is in the range 1.2 to 1.4 inches. The problem is the way this one is designed, I just don't have enough depth in here to get in there and accurately measure that. It'll just touch these fingers out here to do the measurement but because I can't square it up in the bore I can't rely on that measurement so I, I won't be able to use my tri mic like I was actually hoping to so I've got to go back to my uh, telescoping gauges here to get in there and measurement the funny thing about it is that the size difference of where it's at and where it's going to be is very minute but it's right on the maximum of what this telescope gauge will read but just small enough where this telescope gauge will not reach in there i mean it's just right on the border so i'm gonna probably be having to use both of these to uh, get my measurement there and i'll just use my uh, my uh, one to two mic this is the one that i recently got at the florida flywheelers brown and sharp slant line with the uh, friction barrel right there really nice mic i've already checked it it's dead nuts on so that's our sizing we want it to 32 millimeter and it's actually like 31 and a half millimeter right now. So we've got about a half a millimeter to uh, remove out of this bore. So you can, you can use calipers, but I never, I never uh, recommend people using calipers for a really accurate measurement like that. I mean, you can get lucky and get right there on it. So it'll certainly work and you can get the job done, but I use calipers as a reference and sneaking up on a size or if I just want to see where something's at like that, I call it 31 and a half. But to, to get it accurate within a thousandths is where you need to use your, your precision tools such as a micrometer, an inside mic, or telescope gauge, things like that. Let's see if we can repeat our success on uh, getting this chucked without having to do any kind of bumping it around. So I, I lay it in there. And then I tighten the chuck and loosen it just a few times to uh, help try to get it centered up on the jaws. And then once I get it where I think we're where we need to be, actually I want to go on there a little bit more like that. I'm just barely tightening it with one hand there. Do the same thing to all three pinions. Progressively tightening it up where it needs to be. This isn't going to take much to hold it, so... Let's see if that's going to be where we need. Grab my dial. We'll, uh, we'll check the face. Let's check the face first and see where it's at. Oh yeah, that's within one thousandths on the face, so we're going to call that one good. Let's check our bore. Fine adjust on the Noga here to bring it up to it. Can y'all see that? I think you can. The inside of that's kind of chewed up a little bit. So it looks like we're within one half a thousandths on being true. Looking good. All right, we're ready to go. 
We're going to use our Micro 100 Micro Quick tool holder here and a solid carbide boring bar to get this done. So that's going to be the completion of Ed's projects there. We've got our two aluminum discs here that we made our modifications on. Got good sizing on using our, using our measuring tools at hand. Uh, titanium rods finished up, so ready to uh, get all this boxed up and sent back to them. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this project, and we'll see you on the next one. One of my little secret spots here on uh, Pensacola Bay. Come and hang out every now and then, eat lunch. Just enjoy the uh, view of the bay here. Got me some chicken strips. And got a great view of the bay here. Beautiful day, a little cool out. Nice and sunny though, the water looks pretty. You gotta watch those sneaky suckers there. I had one of my uh, piece of my tender sitting up there on my box and it <laughs> swooped in and grabbed it and flew off. Now they're all swarming me.